Hi, my name is Garrett Campbell and I'm a software engineer on the C++ IDE CMake team. I want to talk to you today about one of the features that the CMake team delivers in Visual Studio, and that is the CMake Targets view. This is a similar view to the Solution Explorer, but this view focuses on the ability to view and interact with the targets of your CMake project. Um, over the past few months, we have had many improvements to the CMake Targets view, and I'm excited to show off these changes. To start, let's actually open a CMake project up in Visual Studio and see what it looks like and how we currently navigate to the CMake Targets view. So, as you can see here, we have opened a CMake project, and this is actually the CMake project from Kitware, which is what develops CMake itself. So this should be a pretty interesting project to look at. Currently, the way that we navigate to the Targets view is we actually use this button here, which is the Switch Between Solutions and Available Views button. And this is somewhat clunky because it actually takes us to this third kind of secondary view that allows us to pick between the folder view or the CMake targets view. And so you gotta click that button, then click the targets view, and then it does take you there. And then to get back to the folder view, you have to do the same process the other way. So instead, we wanted to be able to make this a little bit more accessible, so we created two different entry points into the view. The first is through this view button at the top, where you can say view CMake targets. And this takes you directly to the CMake targets view. Additionally, if we switch back to the folder view, we can show that we actually have a context menu entry now. So if you right click on any file or folder, it will now pop up a option to say switch to the CMake targets view. And so you can obviously switch very easily now through the view button or through the context menu. And then if you want to get back to the folder view from the CMake targets view, you can do the same thing. You can right click on any item and say switch to folder view. And this allows you to switch to and from the CMake targets view and the folder view very easily. So now that we've talked about how to get to the CMake targets view a little bit easier, let's talk about some of the visual improvements that we've made within the CMake targets view. So first, we'll get to the CMake targets view using one of our new entry points, View CMake Targets. And so now you can actually see that this is the default view of the CMake targets view, and you might notice this pinned targets node at the very top. So this is the main visual improvement that we've made, or one of the main visual improvements that we've made, and this allows you to pin targets to the top of this view for a lot of different scenarios where you might want to have really easy access to some set of important targets rather than trying to search through this long list of targets every time that you come in into this view. So the way that you do this is that you can simply right click on a target. Let's right click on this CMake target here and you can see this option to pin and you simply select that and an item gets added to the pin targets node. And this pin target will have all the same content, all the same references, files, etc. that the normal target had before you pinned it. Additionally, the same way that we pin to the target, you can also unpin. So you can right click this target and say unpin. Also, the same way that you can pin any single item within the target view, you can also multi-select a large swath of items if you're interested in doing that. So for example, if I wanted to pin a lot of the test items, I could come down, find this whole section of test, test targets, and I can click all of them and click right click and then pin. And the same way, this is going to get added into your pin targets view at the top. Most importantly, one thing that would be crucial to your development workflow is that when you pin targets and then you close Visual Studio and you come back to the same workspace, the same CMake project, you're going to expect that these pin targets stay in this targets view. You don't want to have to repin every time you open Visual Studio. And so we'll show that that does work for our feature now. So if I close Visual Studio and reopen it, you'll see that CMake starts to configure and then once CMake finishes its configuration and knows that all the information that it needs to populate the targets you, you'll notice that the pinned targets return as well. So CMake fin generation is finished and so we'll switch back to the targets view and you can see here that the pinned targets returned the same targets that were pinned in your last session of Visual Studio. Lastly, you may get to a point where you're done with the items that you want to pin in your target view. You've kind of done all the development you want to do with them and you don't need them pinned anymore. And so to clear out all of your pin targets, you can actually right click this pin targets node and click unpin all. And so that's just a quick overview of all the features that we've added for specifically pinning targets in your target view. On the flip side of pinning targets, we also now support excluding targets, and this could be extraordinarily useful when you're including a lot of third-party code or other scenarios where you don't want to view a lot of different things in your target view, but you want to focus on a specific subset. 
Um, this is similar to pinning targets, but it instead it hides things from the view that you don't care about seeing. And so this is supported through the VS Workspace settings.json file, and specifically a macro that we added, the CMake targets view excluded items key within that file. And so this file can be located at your root folder view, and so we'll go to the folder view, and we can see that the VS Workspace settings.json file is included right under our root folder. Then we'll switch back to our CMake targets view to be able to see any changes we make. And so now we'll go over a couple of different examples of how you can use this macro within the VS Workspace settings file to exclude various items from your view. And so first, we'll exclude just the project. And this could be really useful in moments in moments where you're maybe in a multi-root scenario and you only care about actually one of your projects rather than all of them. And you can exclude certain projects so that you can only see one of them. And we'll remove that back to the default. And so you can see that now that I've removed the field, it goes back to what you expected. Additionally, we can hide targets. And so we'll hide this top-level CMake target, and so you can see that it disappeared. And then if I remove this entry, you can see that it returns. Additionally, while for pinning targets, we only supported this for targets, you can also see that for excluding things, we can exclude projects, targets, and then also folders and files. And so we'll go over a quick example of that as well. So if you scroll down in this targets view, you can actually see that there's a couple folders here. And if we wanted to exclude some of those, you can see that we can do the same sort of format, but for folders and exclude that folder. Additionally, we can exclude files. CMake file. Let's say you wanted to exclude the CMake lists file in all of your different targets. So if you remove the CMake file, CMake lists.txt, you can see that the CMake list.txt got removed as well. So this is super flexible because you can do it for files, folders, targets, and projects. Additionally, it's flexible because we support a simple version of regex. So if you wanted to remove some sort of thing that had a certain pattern within the file name, you can do that as well. So for example, we can focus specifically on the CMake target by saying CMake target, CMake, and then the bar indicates the next level of depth within the view. And then we can say CMake file CM star. So this will remove anything that starts with CM. And so in this case, you would expect, I think, all of these files to be removed. So if I save that, you'll notice that all of those files got removed. And then if I remove this entry, they all come back. So this is super useful because you can remove um, certain subsets of things based on a regex match. Additionally, um, you can specify this through fold depths of folders underneath. Um, we don't support double star globbing, so there's not indefinite amounts of um, depths that you can support but you'd have to support it through adding a star for each level of depth that you want to match. So as a quick example, we'll come down to the CMake target of the C test lib. So that's here. So we'll focus on that target. And if you expand this, you'll notice that there's two different folders. C test that has a lot of different files, CMC test files, CM parse files, as well as Lexer parser folder. So if we say CMake target, C test lib, and then let's say we want to do it for any folder within this view, you can see that we put a regex star for this, and then we say any file that is CMC test at the beginning. So if we do that, you'll notice that all of the files under the, C, the lecture parser folder got removed, and the C test had multiple of the files removed, with some, the only ones remaining being the ones that don't match this exclusion. And so this is super useful as you can exclude with lots of flexibility with the small caveat that we don't support double star globbing. Um, you have to do that for each level of depth within your tree. One other feature that we had support for was supporting the show all files button that is provided through the exclusion explorer. And so you can see that here in this top row, the show all files button. And this can be extremely useful for if you already have exclusions added for your CMake targets view. And you don't want to remove these exclusions, but you do want to quickly see what the view would look like without these exclusions. And so, as you can see, the CMC test files are all still excluded from our CTest folder and our Lexer parser folder. And this is within our CTest lib target. If I just want to see what it looks like without these exclusions, I can hit show all files, see that they return. And if I say show all files again, you can see that they go away. Additionally, one other button that's provided by the Solution Explorer that we added support for is the Sync with Active Document button. And so you can imagine that when you're 
perusing through all of your code, or maybe you're debugging, or just in general investigating your code base, you may find yourself in a file that you're not sure where it lives or what target it is included in. And so this can be really useful to help you quickly find this out. So let's say that we were able to open these various files and we're not sure where they're at. Let's say the cmc11 thread local.cmake. We're not sure where this comes from, but if we hit the cmake um, or the sync with active document button, we can see that it automatically opens up the different source files and depths within the cmake target to show you where that is located. And we can show this for a couple different files. So this ret1.cxx, sync with active document. Oh, it's in this mem check fail target. What about the cm expression lexer? Oh, well, it's located in the lexer parser from within the CMake lib. So this is really useful as it can help you know what the file that you're looking in, what target is including it. Now the last visual update that we've made to CMake target to you is specific to deeply nested items within your target to you. So sometimes there are things you've included in your CMake project that are deeply nested under a bunch of different targets, folders, and files. And this can make it annoying to be able to navigate to because you have to expand so many different nodes to be able to view those files. Instead, we've now added support where if you have a deeply nested file, we actually concatenate the folder structure above it if there are no other children below it. So, for example, if I down, scroll down to the tests folder, there's an example of this within the CMake project. So, you can see that this folder here, it says run CMake and then slash CPEC. So, prior to these changes, you would have had to navigate twice to get to any files under, or folders underneath this structure. But because we could tell that CPEC was the only child of run CMake, we now concatenate that. So instead of two, you can now do this in one click and see all of the folders underneath this structure. You can see how this would be extremely useful, especially if there was actually six different expansions that you would need to make that could have been concatenated down into one. Lastly, we've made one other update that's not directly related to the UI of the CMake targets you, but it does have to do with CMake targets. Um, so typically, when you open up a new CMake project or an MS Build project or any project in Visual Studio, it is implicit that you would be able to hit F5 to be able to start debugging. However, that hasn't been the case for CMake projects, and we've made this improvement such that now it is. So we'll go ahead and show off this new capability. So if I hit File, New, Project, and create a new CMake project, in the past, you would open this up and it would say only select startup item. And, and so you would press F5 and it would say actually you don't have anything selected. Now we've added support such that after it finishes configuring, so you can see now in the bottom left that you can see that CMake has finished generating. And now you can see that we defaulted to it the CMake project target that is generated. So now if I press F5 right after opening up the new project, we can start debugging immediately, hit breakpoints, and do our typical development workflow. And this is, makes the new project experience much better for CMake. So that's all I have for you. We have done a lot of different improvements from being able to get to the CMake targets view better, to pinning targets, to excluding targets, to being able to more easily show off files or sync with active document, to being able to debug a lot quicker. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video and I hope that you try out all these different features and give us feedback and let us know if you run into any issues. Thanks.